Hey guys, Richard Oldner here, and welcome to the channel. Today it's all about 3800 L67, you know what I'm talking about, V6 supercharged performance. In this video, we're going to take a look at the 3800 Series 2 L67. I'm talking about the supercharged 3.8 liter V6 motor used in the Pontiac Grand Prix GTP, in the Buick Regal GS and Riviera, and other applications. Now, this is a very popular front-wheel drive application, although GM also used it in rear-wheel drive form in the Camaro and Firebird, but not in supercharged form like our L67. So we're going to check out what happens when we do things like tuning, different timing levels, we're also going to take a look at E85, and then we're also going to run the motor actually naturally aspirated. That's right, we're going to remove the supercharger. I gut the blower housing. We made an end cap for it and ran that on top of the factory lower supercharged manifold. That way we could find out how much power the supercharger is actually adding to our NA combination. I also did a cool trick with the bypass valve. Lots of great stuff. Let's check it out. Okay, getting started, we ran our motor up on the dyno with basically everything stock. The only thing that it had that was aftermarket was a set of long tube headers, everything else, M90 blower, factory throttle body mass air meter, factory intake, factory short block. This thing did have the L32 heads that had been recently freshened up, but there was no porting, no valve jobs, no, nothing like that. So basically this is an L67 and it was run on 91 pump gas and I wanted to show you what happens when we run different timing levels. So this is with 16 degrees all the way across from 2900 all the way out to 57 or 5800 and this is it run on 91 octane with 16 degrees of total timing and what we do is start out with a low timing and we start adding timing. So I want you guys to tell me in the comments if you can tell where we added timing. So take a look this is when we went to 18 degrees. So where did we add 18 degrees? Right about here, right at 3,500 RPM. So wherever we added the timing, wherever we made it 18 degrees, it improved power and it gained more power out here at the top because we went from 259 horsepower to 275 horsepower. So a big jump in power from just the timing, but we weren't done. Here's what happened when we added 20 degrees. And again, tell me if you think you know where we added 20 degrees from right from 4500 <laughs> where we start seeing the gain so with 20 degrees the peak power jumped up to 282 horsepower and again this is all on 91 octane factory 3.8 liter or 3.8 inch pulley this thing made a peak of about 8.2 or 8.3 pounds so this is as much timing as we ran on pump gas so now let's take a look and see what happens when we added e85 and went with even more timing now that i've illustrated what happens when we go from 16 degrees of timing, 18 degrees of timing, and 20 degrees of timing on 91 octane. Let's find out what happened when we put E85 in this thing. And this was our highest timing level, 20 degrees out at the top on 91. And here's what happened when we replaced the 91 with E85. You can see we did indeed pick up power and we ran this at the same air fuel ratio. And I know what you're thinking, why, how can you run it at the same air fuel, it's E85. Well, we're running at the same air fuel on the gas scale, which means we had to supply a lot more E85 to make it the same air fuel ratio as the gasoline on the gas scale. So basically we're using up a lot more E85 to get it at the same air fuel ratio, but we did pick up power. Peak power went from 282 up to 289 and peak torque went up from 291 to 297 foot-pounds. But the nice thing about E85, and this is why everybody adds it and runs it on a supercharged motor, honestly, I expected bigger gains with just adding E85 and replacing the 91. But here's what happened when we increased the timing. So what we did is basically add two degrees of timing everywhere through the entire curve. And it picked up power everywhere through the entire curve. So it, we went to uh, a total of 22 degrees out at the top, and that pushed peak power out to 295, while peak torque was up to 303.5. So if you want to round up, you can call that 304 foot-pounds of torque. You can see 
a little bit more torque than power, which is kind of uh, normal for this type of motor. It's not very, it's pretty mild camshaft and, you know, small cylinder heads and all that. So it's not going to make a lot of peak power, but it's got a good average power production. It's got a good torque curve. Now let's take a look, oddly enough, at what we did to our supercharged motor by running it naturally aspirated. One of the best ways to find out how effective the supercharger is, is to run the same combination naturally aspirated. That's exactly what we did with this L67-3800. We, I removed the M90 supercharger and ran the motor naturally aspirated so we could illustrate how much power the blower actually adds on top of the NA motor. And to do that, I needed a naturally aspirated intake manifold. Now, there are a number of them available over the wrecking yards on the naturally aspirated versions, but those things are slightly different because the injectors sit in the manifold and not in the cylinder heads like they do in the supercharged version. It's not something we couldn't overcome, but rather than do that, I actually wanted to find out what happened with just a change going from supercharged to naturally aspirated while retaining the same manifold. In order to do that, what I did was I actually ran a blower housing as the upper intake manifold and retained the lower manifold in the blower. All I had to do was remove the snout and pull out the rotor pack and I made this simple plate. I'll go ahead and show you a photo of it. Made a simple a plate to cap the back of the blower housing and then use the factory throttle body mass error assembly just like we would with the supercharger. That, that easily bolted in place of the M90 supercharger, which allowed us to run the thing naturally aspirated using that blower housing. So it all worked out very well. But here's what happened when we ran the motor naturally aspirated and we were still running E85 like we had with the supercharged combination, but run naturally aspirated. Our 3800 Series 2 produced 212 horsepower. Peak torque was up quite a bit, three, 238 foot-pounds, although that's kind of the load-in number. So I think 235 is probably a more realistic number. It's interesting that the torque is up pretty good down low given the short runner manifold. This thing made peak power out at 5,200 or so, and then the power output fell off. You know the thing has a mild cam. But here's what happened as a comparison when we were running the supercharger, so we could see the difference. And this was in optimized trim, again, with the E85, just like we ran the NA motor, and with uh, extra timing offered, which allowed us to run the motor on E85 with the extra timing under boost. But you can see that the supercharger, you know, went from 212 horsepower up to 295 horsepower. Peak torque was from 235 foot-pounds up to 303 or 304 foot-pounds of torque. So the boost obviously is adding power. It's adding power all the way through the curve. Because we have a rising boost curve on every one of these motors that I've ever run, we also, start, we also see bigger gains on the top end than we do on the bottom, despite the fact that our roots blower is known for having immediate boost response. But these are the differences in power run our motor naturally aspirated versus running the same motor under boost with the factory M90 blower. This final test only came about because I retained the factory blower intake manifold and the top half of the blower as well to run our naturally aspirated combination by using the blower housing and removing the rotor pack and everything from it and putting a cap at the end of it. That allows us to use a very important part of this to run this test and that is the bypass valve. Now the bypass valve for a supercharged combination allows the air to recirculate so it doesn't continue to get beat up and get hot between the blower and the manifold. The bypass valve recirculates that back into the inlet, allows fresh air to come in and cool it so we don't get heated air. But when this motor is run naturally aspirated, what happens with the bypass valve and with the blower is when you go to wide open throttle, the bypass valve closes. That'll, that stops air from escaping and allows boost to enter the motor and you, you to have a supercharged combination. The bypass valve on our naturally aspirated motor does the same thing. It still closes, but what I wanted to find out is if we open that, that allows another passage of air from the upper plenum, basically, into the bottom of the manifold. So if the little V cut out where the discharge is for the supercharged air, 
is too restrictive in naturally aspirated form, if we add another valve, meaning the bypass valve, maybe we can get more air and more power. That was the theory and that's the test I ran. By I, what I did was uh, wire basically the, the blow off valve, wired that open, so we had full flow and here's what happened. We did indeed pick up power, so extra airflow going into the lower manifold from the upper manifold, not just limited to the opening, the discharge opening of the supercharger, actually increased power. The peak torque was up to 244 foot pounds, or more likely 240 or so, so we picked up five or six foot pounds. Peak horsepower was up to 215, but as you can see, it basically gained power all the way through the curve. So the trick to making more power on your NA motor is to open that bypass valve. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from this little adventure? Dyno testing our 3800 Series 2 L67 supercharged 3.8 liter V6. We learned a lot of cool stuff. First of all, we ran the motor in basically stock trim, the way you'd get it from the wrecking yard. Now, I, I know we added long tube headers and we did have an optimized tune on it, but it had all the factory accessories. So we get a pretty good idea, not only what that motor makes at the factory boost level, but also what the whole curve looks like, which is always good information. The other thing that's cool is I showed you what happens if you were had to detune the motor, basically, if you have to run pump gas and you're running it hotter and doing all the stuff that you do when it's in the car, how much power you would lose by detuning it and taking away timing. I also showed you, as I always like to, what happens when we run E85 on a boosted application. And as always, the motor responded very well to E85, adding power all by itself and adding power by allowing you to run more timing. Now, the other cool thing we did is ran this motor naturally aspirated because the only way to figure out how much power the boost is actually adding to the equation is you have to know what you're starting with in NA trim. And that's exactly what we did. What I did was gut the blower housing, put the end cap on it, use that as the upper manifold, ran the factory short runner lower manifold that they run with the supercharger to show you exactly how much power the blower was worth. Also, what did you guys think about, and let me know in the comments, what did you think about the cool like bypass valve trick that I used? It showed that the motor wanted more airflow. So if you're gonna run a naturally aspirated version of this motor, especially if you're gonna eventually run a turbo and blow through that, it's a good idea to maybe hog out all of that area that the blower has to force all the air through the little V deal, get rid of all of that, and in fact, use the late model version of the blower that has a big triangular opening bigger than the early L67. Use the L32, both the intake and the blower housing if you're going to use it with a turbo. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell because I got a lot more stuff coming up on the 3800. I did a ton more testing. We ran different blowers, different pulleys. We ran different water meth injection on it. Lots of cool stuff on the 3800 coming up and lots more. Thanks for watching.